viewers and welcome back to the Dodge Caravan channel. That's what it seems like all the time here. We work on a lot of caravans, town and countries. I don't know why. Either they're junk or everybody drives them. Uh, but in this case we've got a 2014 Grand Caravan. I think it is. Yes, it is a Dodge. A uh, couple complaints. First complaint is the passenger side temperature control is always stuck on hot and it wasn't a big deal in the winter time because we need heat but the summer time's coming and this lady's hot so we need to fix that and also the rear heater system makes an obnoxious clicking sound continually and that needs to be fixed now when I pulled it in uh, I'll be honest I already took a little peek at it to see you know kind of figure out what's going on I want to be able to make sure I could get some parts ordered I'm pretty sure we just got a couple bad uh, temperature actuators. Now, the passenger one, uh, I was checking to see if you could access it through the passenger side footwell, and you can. And I looked up there and I turned it from hot to cold. Nothing was happening. So I had my little trim panel tool because I had to take the hush panel down in the footwell. So I reached up and gave her a little whack with the end of my uh, trim panel tool, and it miraculously works now. So there won't really be any diagnosing on that. As far as the rear one goes, uh, I did notice when you go, when you turn on the rear heat and you go from full cold to full hot, when it hits the end of the line, you know, when it gets all the way to full cold, then it just sits there, you know, click, 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 click. And then again, when it goes to full hot, it does the same thing. Uh, I've done these in the past on, you know, various makes and models. And usually the gear inside there, a little plastic gear, it strips out because it always stops in the same spot. And then I believe, we're going to have to look at a wire diagram, uh, I think the feedback signal on these or how it knows when it's at the end of the line is based off amperage draw, I think. So, you know, I mean, perhaps some of you guys have heard it, like when you, when you turn your heat control all the way to cold, you'll hear the motor move, it's like, ee, and then when it gets to the end of the line, it's, ee, you know, you hear it kind of like bogged down. And that's what these do. So, you know, those little plastic gears, you know, made out of Chineseium. They can only take it so much. So needless to say, I haven't pulled back uh, the rear part. Kind of show you what's going on. We'll work our way through it. Perhaps it'll be helpful to somebody out there in TV land who needs to fix their carry van. Give me an idea where we're working. This is the passenger footwell. We're gonna be up under the dash there. I'm gonna show you the passenger side air temp blend door actuator. And uh, I'll show you what I did. Like I said, I just took my little upholstery tool Give a little whack, now it works. So no diagnosis needed other than that. But I'll show you where it's at because when we change it, I don't think uh, it's gonna be able to get my big dome up in there and my hand in the camera. So there she is, folks. If you're looking under your dash, let me see if I can move these wires here. It's gonna be this one with this, I think it's gray. I can't really see, yeah, I think it's gray. So when I change the temperature on the passenger side only, We'll watch that actuate and, and prior to this like I said it wasn't doing anything I just give her a little whack on the actuator and it worked so that's full hot or full cold one or the other so you can see that actuating uh, we're just gonna get just the actuator I ordered it from Chrysler they're I don't know 40 bucks ish something like that we'll see if we can't uh, we're gonna have to give this a I think the only way to do this is to give it the classic reach around we'll reach up there looks like a couple screws on it one connector <coughs> that scares me. We'll get that uh, undone, even though it's working now. I wouldn't dare give it back to the customer simply because we know it's going to break again. Super common failure on these. Then we'll have a little listen to the rear. So I got the rear. You know, the rear blower seems to work good. We'll leave it on one notch. We'll go full cold. We'll listen. Now we bring it off cold a little bit, it quits, so. All right, same thing, we'll go all the way to full hot. A little different sound. Ooh, that's kind of fun. But if we leave it in the middle, it never does it. Um, I've changed modes uh, for the rear because that'll come out of the roof vents depending on if it's you know hot or cold and floor and all that stuff. Moved everything around. The only thing I hear in the back is this. 
So that we have to tear apart. I assume the gear inside the motor is stripped out. Uh, at any rate, we've got our parts on the way. I ordered a couple uh, actuators. So we'll work on getting the back tore apart first, I guess. Step one. Oh, what do we got? Got a little baby seat. Got some Coke. Step two. Step three. Boom. Gotta say, I love the stolen go. But 2014, folks. Three years old. What a bunch of hippy, dippy, baloney. So the HVAC unit lives behind this quarter trim panel. Now I've done other videos on these where we've done the rear AC evaporators, same exact body style. So in an effort to save some video time, save myself time moving cameras around and such, or camera, because I only have one, uh, I'm gonna link that video here on the screen in the description all that stuff so you can see how to remove all this trim and do all that to get to the HVAC box once I get this quarter trim piece off um, which isn't that big a deal you've got this upper piece here your threshold down there a couple seat belt little holder donger things the threshold by the sliding door and pretty much yank uh, a couple couple screws it is honestly quite simple to get that off uh, there's a piece up here by the seatbelt. You'll see it in that other video. Pretty easy. Uh, and uh, once I get this off, we'll see where this little temperature actuator lives. And then we'll uh, take it from there. What's up, Mrs. O? <laughs> I just called you the people I haven't seen you in a while. I'm not going to lie. I haven't really changed much. They can just go back and see me. It's like seeing me again. I know. Why don't you come out here and talk to us? Give us your thoughts. On the Dodge Carry vans. What do you think? Why do you think we see so many of them? You think because everybody drives them, or because they're junk? Hmm. Or both? Don't don't bang your. No, I gotta have to paint the soap side of the <laughs> This guy watches our channel, you know. Oh man. <laughs> Anyhow, what the heck's that big one? Look at that. What'd you now do you that? broke it. <laughs> the name Keith turned off too. Huh? Thanks, hmm. possessed. Charlotte. What do you think's wrong with it? What's the problem? Symptoms. Heat stuck on in the front, passenger side only. And the rear, when you change the heat from hot to cold, like Kitty Perry. Mountain, I'm cold, I'm guessing. You know that song, right? Mm -hmm. I used to rock that on the Wii. Remember when we played that game? I still have it. Yeah, I totally put that on YouTube. I destroy you in that game. Just Ooh, dance. Moves you. Like the destroyer. Uh, and when you change from hot to cold in the back, it does the clicking sound at the end of its stroke from hot to cold. What'd you guess? First guess. Um, <coughs> actuator. <coughs> oh, I was going to say like a, a relay or No, something. wrong. Well, I don't know the names of all those. Oh, you were going to say an actuator. Actuator. Oh, mm -hmm. here comes the people. Here comes the guy. All right, well, thanks for visiting us, Mrs. O. Ta-da. We're in. Uh, and as memory served me correctly, the actuators are on the inside. I don't know if we can take the box, we'll pull these uh, air ducts off front and rear, or the upper and lower, and see if we can't take the bolts out of that. Maybe just pull her back a little bit, give her the classic reach around back here, and get it done. I gotta be honest with you. This is always cooking something in there, and it doesn't smell like salad. The whole shop is full of what I believe to be is bacon, so we better go have a look. What are you making? What? Are you cooking bacon? Oh, that is amazing. It smells amazing out in my shop right mm, now. It's not good. And are you going to ruin it with cabbage? Yes. Right. Actually, it's not really ruining it. The baking is saving the cabbage. <laughs> Wow, what are you, like, what's the deal? Bacon and cabbage, I'm, you know, enlighten us. It gotta be good, right? Are you gonna cook the cabbage in the bacon grease? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. That's amazing. Seriously. Wow. And this is your new induction, induction oven? Mm -hmm. Induction cooktop? Yeah, it works great. Sent to us by a viewer. Amazing. Yeah. You're not gonna get rid of the bacon grease, right? 
No. No, um, you're not. You're, you're gonna cook that. That's a lot of grease. Am I gonna be eating the cooked cabbage? I'm gonna feed you the bacon grease. Amazing. Have you ever noticed the bacon of the bacon grease? Listen to it. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Can you turn this off? Can you turn that off? Mm. You have to like unplug it. Listen. It's like a whole crowd of people going. Ah, yay, bacon! <laughs> you ever notice that? Hmm. It's like people cheering. That's how good bacon is. I expect some cheering when it's done. Oh, I will. I'll eat that cooked cabbage like a champ. All right. Well, we had to come in back to our program. Goodbye. Yeah. Bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? Old Zoe's not like a little, like a, like a little glow, like I'm putting out a good thing. Um, so that's off. I'm discouraged. Well, I'm, I'm a little disturbed at two things, I guess. First of all, when I went to take this front seat belt out, no tools required. I spun this out with my fingers, I kid you not. It was held in like two threads. Um, and I'm wondering if it's that way from the factory because you can see that where the blue Loctite is on it and it was only in. It was in legit two threads. That's disturbing. This lady has children. And there's a car seat there. Fortunately, she's using the latch system. But that is, was a little concerning. I don't know. But the other thing was, too, the rubber. The little rubber cover was already up off from it. So perhaps the lady's husband, we won't mention, who watches our channel, maybe he left it loose. But why would he have had it loose? I don't know. Uh, and the other thing that's disturbing is this. Let me get them. Oh, is I got the new factory parts and how do we know they're factory well folks genuine Mopar made in China I should have just got the piece of crap Dorman ones and saved 10 bucks because they probably come out of the same factory what a, what's the world coming to man GM made in Malaysia made in Mexico and now Chrysler made in China if you want a good old American every single Honda part we get made in USA Toyota made in USA you tell me folks you call me an American because that's what I drive but at least the parts are made here in the US so we'll take that bolt out of the coolant hoses Rear. One there in the top corner. Now that she's loosey goosey, so we've got one actuator up here that should be for the mode. Now our AC lines and everything are still hooked, so we got to be a little bit ginger. And then we've got one more actuator down low. And that should be our one that's clicking. Because what else do we have? We've got a blower resistor on the back. And again, in that video where we do the HVAC, the evaporator core, uh, we show this box turned around. Uh, but what we will have to do here, we will have to give it the classic reach around. This lower one is going to be our temperature actuator. I can't show you. I'll be honest with you. But down here it's got a plug you'll see it in the in the other video if you're that interested there's our plugger and what we'll do we will click our little astro light here which is amazing the 30 so I'll get my screwdriver kit that I must be sitting on and or around oh, there. there we go and it's gonna take a little torque spit I don't know what size. That size right there. Look at that. First try. T20 ish. I think that's what I've got. I've got a little uh, little bit holder by Mac Tools, which is a handy little holder for stuff like this. These are a really coarse screw. So we'll have to get it loose. 
loose and not drop it. There's one. Come on, little guy. There we go. There's one. We have to kind of feel around for the other one. Sometimes you just got to do it by feel, folks. I'm not going to lie. That's where you're growing up, I guess. I got to be close. I can almost feel the edge of it. Mm, there it is. We're in. You can always tell. two screws on those I believe and then probably a locator pin so there's the second screw give it a wiggle 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 oh there she is there's that actuator now they are key weighed so we're gonna have to look at the orientation of our new Chinesium actuator how close is it our new one with the green donger is pretty close. So we should have to, to be able to reach back here and move our wire out the way. There it is. In like flint, baby. And then essentially just reverse the process. Take the screw out, put the screw in. Mechanics do that's what we do, and it was the same part number front to rear, so that would explain a lot. I'm gonna tighten this up before we put this whole jabroni back together. We will test the system naturally. It is a little bit difficult. Put one screw in there. Stick the other screw in the top just to kind of hold her still. We'll be in good shape for the shape we're in. All right. Moment of truth. changing modes in the back or changing temperature from hot to cold that's why I turn the airflow up a little bit you'll hear the disturbance in airflow perhaps not on the camera but that's hot that's cold so you can hear it change obviously with no clicking now done did good so that's it that's how to install your Chinese genuine Mopar what a disgrace you're a disgrace Chrysler hope you're watching uh, on the back of your 14 Grand Caravan uh, no need to drain the coolant H back refrigerant rather uh, simply slip it back reach back with a bit holder Dunsky uh, so I'm going to put the air ducts back on, obviously the top bottom one, throw the quarter panel trim back on, again, look in the description, see where we did this whole job, a uh, very similar one, pulling the whole thing out if you want to see how to take all the trim and stuff off. Uh, we're going to make sure we re-loctite and re-torque the seat belt bolts, uh, regardless of why it was loose or who loosened it. Um, so that way there we can sleep at night and we know the little babies ain't flying through the windshield if she has to slam on the brakes. We'll feel good about that and then we'll move on to the front actuator. One we just took out of the back. You see that little symbol? That's da 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 doorman. Stripping people's pockets every day. Multi-billion dollar Chineseium company. <laughs> Selling crap. And I just looked at the factory one to see if it was you know, dormant also, but it's not. It's got some Mopar lingo on there. But yeah, she ain't no virgin, baby. That's dormant.
I don't care what you say. You can deep fry anything in bacon grease. That's amazing. Enough monkey business. Too much today. Time has passed. We're gonna go uh, under this one. Like I say, it is 100% impossible to record, but you guys saw where it was. So hopefully, you'll understand. We're going at this one straight by feel, I think. Get in one of the screw holes. So we're just gonna take the two bolts that hold just the actuator, the two screws there. Kind of curious to see if this is a Dorman one too. The upper one's gonna be kind of a pisser to get to. We'll get this lower one, then we'll get it unplugged. Pretty much the same process, you know. Fortunately, I just heard the blend door or something go shut there, the recirculation door. Let me shut the key off. Because I had to back it up a little bit so I could get this door open. Um, I don't think. Yeah, the top, the top screw is going to suck. I'll tell you what. I'm going to unplug. There's a gray connector and a black connector. And this uh, blower resistor. These two little guys here. You can't see them. These little guys here. Unplug them. That's going to give us a little more room for our hand. There. One. The easy one. I don't know if we can reach that top one. Uh, this one's got a red lock in it too. Awesome. That's what we do for the people. So the connector has a red lock in it, so we'll let this uh, let it hang down to get it unplugged. If I can get it lined up here. There she goes. We're in now. older I get, the more I hate laying under dashes. It's not the getting in part, it's the getting out that sucks. And then eventually my arms go numb. Kinda gotta get out and get the, get the blood flow back. Chrysler insists on using those red locks and everything. There. So that's a factory one. Perhaps somebody was in the back at some day, some point in its life. Whoa! Shoot, it's not even close to matching. Uh, hopefully it's somewhere throughout its travel because when you put this in in the key weight section You know you've got to rotate it to get the screw holes lined up Otherwise, we're going to have to plug it in and turn it on to let it get into a position In which we can do that I'll find out here in a second anyways I'm sure rotate the arm a little, we can move the arm whatever direction we want. Hey, got it. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than it is good, I'll tell you that. So I'll get the screws back in it, we'll make sure we've got hot to cold here, which we should have because we did have when I took it apart. All it needed was a little whack from a screwdriver. 
Got this lady's hair. Donsky. Put that little push panel back up here. Alright. I'm being beautiful. We're gonna start it up. Hang on there, folks. Alright, we'll let her hit full operating temperature. Make sure all this stuff works. So one thing we have to do before we ship it. Uh, let's see, we are going to go through, this should be this calibration test. Um, so yeah, you can see here, uh, basically I say it's going to move all the doors to their full travel span. Uh, make sure each, every door works. Uh, so I'm going to run through that while the vehicle's warming up. Uh, process takes about, you know, a minute or so, so we won't show that, but it just basically turns on your, uh, one of these lights will start blinking over here and then it goes through the process where it moves the doors uh, to their full swing and sets the calibration on them. All right, well, the calibration is done. Passenger side right now, the side that was broke, is at 53 degrees. We'll crank her up on the heat. Make sure that it changes to hot. And we can see we've got a steady, steady climb there. Still cool on the passenger side. So that seems to be coming up. I think we're almost, we got to be almost warmed up all the way. Yep, about halfway there. Obviously we had some change there. Passenger side to driver's side and that should start cooling back down. Beautiful, let's make sure the back works. Hopped into lower vent in the rear. See we're about 68 degrees there. Come in, crank her up to full hot. We're on the steady climb up. Seems like success. Well, there you have it folks, your temperature door actuators on your carry van, front and rear. Uh, now if it's your driver's side that's gone wonky, uh, in the front you can get to the driver's side actuator through the footwell also. You just classic reach around. You can get to it and that's about all there is to it. If you own one of these and they're not broke, the good news is they will be because they always do. Uh, Chrysler's and their heater systems are rubbish. They break all the time. Got multiple videos on doing these and Dodge trucks and I think Jeeps and stuff like that. So uh, that's it. Got to keep trucking. This put me way behind. Uh, so we got to keep moving. Parking lot's full. The people are screaming. We need to get some stuff done. Uh, in the meantime, click subscribe. Click the notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we roll out a video. Check us out on Google Plus, Facebook, and now on Patreon. If you want to find us there and support what we do, we do appreciate that. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.